All right, we are now joined by Georgia Tech head coach Nell Fortner. We will begin with an opening statement from coach and then go to questions. Media joining us today, please use the raise hand function to indicate when you'd like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us an opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, um, congratulations to South Carolina. I thought they played really, really well. Um, they've got a lot of weapons. I th I'm really proud of, of this Georgia Tech team. I think that our, our will to win today was excellent, as it always is. Um, we just didn't have enough weapons, um, couldn't make enough stops. At the end, I thought we, you know, we were scoring pretty well, but we just couldn't make enough stops. And South Carolina shot the three ball a lot better than we thought that they would today. So that that came as a bit of a surprise. But to hold them to seven offensive rebounds, um, to only let them get to the free throw line six, uh, what they have six attempts, or five of seven, or what, what were they? Six of six in the free throw line. But um, we did some things well, but we just didn't quite have enough um, to stop them from scoring in the paint. They killed us points in the paint. But they're an excellent team, and um, I wish them well uh, as they move forward. But, um, you know, super, super proud of, of Georgia Tech. Our first question will come from Carter Hill. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Coach. Uh, Carter Hill with Fifth Quarter. Congratulations on a fantastic season. Uh, I'm curious, what has, you kind of touched on a little bit, what has this past year meant to not even just Georgia Tech women's basketball, but to your university and then the city of Atlanta and then how much, how much, uh, what does, what does, uh, how much fuel does this give you to get back to this stage next season? Yeah, um, I thought, I think that this season really was extraordinary in that I think we, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, we couldn't have as many fans in the stands. I think that we garnered a lot of attention this year in the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Uh, really excited for what the future holds um, with the excitement surrounding the program at this point. So, you know, hopefully we can build on that. And next year when fans can get back in the stands, um, that we continue to grow our, our fan base. I'm just super proud of these kids. I think that they um, um, really just worked incredibly hard during the pandemic to stay safe and, be, and make sure that we had a season and that they had a season. So um, I, I think, you know, this is something, this is a springboard for us that we'll use to continue to build this program and play at a high level and, and get back to this tournament and, and see if we can go a little bit farther. Our next question comes from Brandon. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey coach, Brandon Sutter, the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Um, can you kind of speak on how you guys kind of bounce back from everyone? Because even in the third quarter, when South Carolina started to separate itself and go up by 16 or 17, it seemed like y'all always had an answer. Um, well, what does that say about uh, the team and your players and the ability to keep bouncing back? Yeah, I think that speaks directly to how tough these kids are. They're, they're incredibly tough. They have a will to win. They're competitive. And it doesn't matter. We can be down. We've been down in several um, games this year, came back to win them because of their, their will to win. Really proud of that. Um, and that, that goes back to the leadership of this team with Kiara Fletcher, Lodemai Lautnan, and Lorella Kubai. They're extremely competitive. So, you know, you always, uh, there's no question in every game we've been in, whether we won or lost, I always knew we were always going to have a chance. Just like, uh, you know, today, I, I felt like we had a chance. I felt like this was a matchup that we could um, do some things to exploit some things. But today, uh, South Carolina just had a better day. But, um, but th these kids are tough. Um, hopefully we're all back here next year um, trying to, get, you know, win a few more games. Our next question comes from Pete. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Uh, hey, now Pete Iacobelli from the Associated Press. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, getting back to some of those same things you talked about a minute ago, you did you were within six points, I think, in the fourth quarter. You had a shot yep. there. Was it what you talked about at first that just couldn't get enough stops on South Carolina? What got away from you guys? Yeah, right at, the, at the end of the day, Pete, we just we couldn't get the stops. At the end of the day, I think, you know, if you score 65 points, you know, we're, we're a team that can hold, hold our opponents to around 55 points a game. So 
We scored enough points to win. We, they just killed us in the paint today. I mean, good gosh, they had like 44, 44 points in the paint. They're, they're big, they're long, they're lengthy. Um, I thought they had some players really stepped up, like Emma here. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Um, she was a handful for us. She ends up being six for eight, and then uh, Saxton, six for eight. They just, they really had a, a day inside. We just didn't have much of an answer for them. So, um, but, uh, you know, maybe a few more stops. This thing would have come down and been a little closer at the end. But again, South Carolina did what they needed to do. They played how they're built. And, um, you know, just congratulations to them. Our next question comes from Pepper with the next hoops. Go ahead, Pepper. <laughs> Hi, Coach. Hey, Pepper. That's on an incredible season. I can only imagine how tough this loss is right now, but what are your main takeaways from this year's tournament run? Yeah, you know, every loss, any loss is hard. You, you're exactly right. But my main takeaways is that this team has a really incredibly bright future. Um, we've got to put some work in in the off season, and we've got to get better individually so we can get into this game next year and um, have a different outcome. But I'm very proud of how we competed this year and how we got through this season with a pandemic and stayed safe and uh, we're able to complete it. So I love these kids. They're hard workers. I can't wait to start working with them again in the off season and get going again. Our next question comes from Brandon. Go ahead. Coach, in terms of the post-game locker room, um, what was kind of your message, especially to those uh, – <laughs> Seniors who might have played their last game. Uh, and then also, I mean, as a coaching staff, so, so do you all start to lobby to talk to them and try to get them to come back for an extra year or what? <laughs> well, that, those, those conversations will take place here in the next few days. But um, the message in the locker room was don't hang your head. Um, I'm, we were all super proud of their effort and their will to win. But, it's, but we know that we've got to get better. Individually, we've got to get better. As a team, we've got to get, you know, we've, we've just got to get better all the, all the way around. We've got to be able to score the ball in the paint a little bit better. So, um, you know, and th those are things we'll work on in the offseason. But I thought our fight during this tournament, coming back 17 down against Stephen F., um, you know, running away from West Virginia, super proud. And getting to the Sweet 16, um, it was a fun, it was a really fun run. And it just makes us all really hungry for the off season. You know, can't wait because everybody should be wanting to get better and 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 get started again. And let's get this thing rolling. So uh, we won't hang our heads when we walk out the back door. Um, just the staff very proud of the effort that we showed today. Our next question comes from Maria. Unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Coach Maria Martin, Eleven Alive. Uh, you've alluded to this a little bit. You talk about how incredible this group of ladies is. But now that you've seen them in this tournament run and what they've been able to do, what separates them from some of the other ladies maybe that you've coached in the past? Um, this group is incredibly tough. They're resilient. They're tough. They're, they're, their will to win is extremely strong. Um, you don't always get that with teams. You don't, you don't know if, if, if certain teams and certain chemistries is going to work that way. This team does. Um, our three leaders, uh, Fletcher, Lodemai, Lotnin, and um, Kubai, just extremely strong leaders. They lead by example. Um, when they speak, their voice is heard. And it's just they set the tone for us. And they just, uh, look, when they get going and they put their mind to it, they're pretty tough to stop. We've got to get a, little, we've got to get a few more pieces on this team to really make a strong run. Uh, those are pieces that we bring in, but they're also individuals working harder on their game to get it a little bit better. We have time for a couple more questions. If there's any more questions, please use the raise hand function now. Thanks a lot, y'all. Thanks so much. Congratulations on a great season. We'll be joined next by Kira Fletcher. If you have a question for her, please use your raise hand function now. Kira, thanks for joining us. Our first question will come from Brand. Brandon, go ahead. Hey, uh, Kira, can you kind of take me into the uh, third quarter of the game there? What do you feel like happened for you guys on the other end to not have an answer for Carolina's offense? But also, can you speak on what it says about uh, uh, the quality of your team to keep bouncing back from this Carolina run? Um, I think our team did an incredible job of answering whenever South Carolina went on their runs. 
uh, I think it shows how resilient we are as a team and that we don't have any quit in us. Um, they're a great team, um, of course, but I think we did an incredible job just answering whatever run that they came at us with. Again, if you have any questions, please use your raise hand function. I'll ask a question. Um, just what did it mean to be able to have this tournament this year? Last year, uh, get seen it canceled to just uh, be able to have been here and actually participated in March Madness this year. Um, it means the world. You know, we were disappointed with the way that the season ended last season with the pandemic and just how grateful we were to be able to participate in this tournament because we just worked so hard in the off season and during the season. So we were just trying to soak in every moment. Um, it, this was a special run for us. We're disappointed in the way that it ended, but um, we're ready to bounce back for next season. Our next question will come from Justin. Go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask your question. Coach Fortner just told us a moment ago her message to you guys was to, to not hang your head. What, what were your emotions? What are the emotions of your teammates uh, in the locker room after this one? Uh, it was a disappointing loss just because we felt like we were right there. Um, South Carolina, they were the number one team on and off in the country all season. And just the way that we battled with them through these 40 minutes just said a lot about our team and how resilient we are. But we were disappointed, but at the same time, we're trying not to hang our heads just because we haven't been in this position before. And just the way that we've been able to uh, fight during this tournament just says a lot about us. Our next question will come from Steve. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Yeah, it's Steve Hummer from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Just wondering, uh, 20 years from now, how are you going to remember this team, do you think? What will be your, your predominant memories of this bunch? Uh, definitely our fight. Um, those are my sisters back there in, in that locker room. Uh, I love each and every one of them. I think this is the closest team I've ever been on uh, through and through. Um, they're just family. Uh, 20 years from now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stay in touch with all of them. Uh, I just love them. and. They have incredible fight in them, great players, great people, great teammates. Our next question comes from Pete. Go ahead. Yeah, Kiara, uh, you guys did make it close. Even every time they pulled away, you got it close. In the fourth quarter, I think you, have, you were only down by six points. What changed after that? What couldn't you guys uh, get done down the stretch that you were able to get done in the other game? Uh, I think it just came down to defensive stops. I think in the games prior to, we were really able to lock down and get those defensive stops. And I mean, it's hard when we're playing against uh, All-American post player. And it just came down to getting stops. I think we really pride ourselves on our defense. And just this game, it got away from us a little bit. I have another question from Brandon. Go ahead. Hey. Uh Kira, um, so do you have any thought of coming back for an extra year? Um, and can you tell me what those conversations might look like over the next couple of days? Um, I haven't really been putting much thought into that. I've been really focused on this season and just helping my team get into the best position possible. But I think I'm definitely going to have conversations with my coaches just to see where their head's at and where my head's at and what's best for me um, moving forward. Again, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. I'll ask another question. What has it meant to you to be able to play for a coach like Nell Fortner? Oh, it means everything. Just from where I began in my college career and her coming in, she's instilled a lot of confidence in myself and my teammates. And she's just an amazing person through and through. She really cares about us as people. And she just makes it fun for us, you know. Um, she makes us want to play for her, fight for her, fight for each other. And she's just one of those people who are just genuine. And you don't really have that a lot these days. So it's just incredible playing for a person like her. Where do you see the program going under her direction? I think the sky's the limit. Um, the way that we've been able to develop and progress in these two years, including a pandemic year, I think says a lot. And just getting adding more pieces to this team and future teams with her leadership and the assistant coaches as well and the type of players that we have already and just developing our freshmen, I think we're going to be a team that you have to look out for for the next years on end.
Great. Thank you so much for your time today. Congratulations on a great season and look forward to some downtime now. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.